Shonda. 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 Come on. See, this is what I knew season six of Scandal would be like the return of Scandal. I knew it. I foresaw it. And then it started. I was like, okay. And then a couple episodes in, I said, okay, what is this? And then I said, okay, we're coming back. Now we're at episode 11 of season six, Trojan Horse. Oh, this episode. What? See, again, this is another scandal episode of how it used to be. Plot line, main plot line, main conflict, conflict of interest, resolution. That is what scandal used to be, and that's what I got tonight. And, oh, God, that ending, and this is, so we just have to go into it. All right, it starts off with something disgusting. David Rosen sleeping with Sarah. You know, ponytail, blonde ponytail, a.k.a. One of the pseudo killers, aka Miss Piggy, aka. Uh, and we call her Miss Piggy because she talks like this, not because of her actual looks. Come on now. Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe. My name is Romy. And so then David, after going and having sex with her, after her making these noises, that's, I said, I'm scarred. I'm scarred! But he goes into the fridge, and guess who pops up? Because it felt too eerie. I said someone's gonna pop up on him, and that was Jake. And I said, "Hmm, how I feel about this?" Well, let me see what continues on. Jake said, "Look, you're gonna go, and you're gonna make some excuse uh, about leaving, or telling your girlfriend you have to leave because something's come up. You have to make sure that she believes you, because." If for a second she doesn't believe you, then you will be dead. He said, what? Yes, that woman that you were sleeping with, your so-called girlfriend, Sarah, she is the one responsible for killing Frankie Vargas for putting Cyrus in jail. Yes, her. So you're going to do this, you're going to do this fast, because we need you. You have work to do. Come on now, stop it. Now it's essentially Operation Get Cyrus Out of Jail. We see all of these clips of everything that's happened regarding Cyrus getting imprisoned, what happened to him while he was in prison, Frankie Vargas being shot, Millie potentially being the presidential nominee, uh, everything with Tom, everything. And this is all playing, you know, because all of this is on Pope and Associates' board to show Millie, because Olivia now has to convince Millie that you, we can't do this. We can't do this. Cyrus deserves to be president. Cyrus was, he wasn't voted in, but... It's his right as the successor to Frankie Vargas. Cyrus went to jail for us. Cyrus did all this stuff. And we owe him. We owe him. So this is the, Cyrus is the good guy. And we have to go and do whatever we can to help him out. Millie doesn't have time for that. Millie's thinking, look, I'm almost there. And you want me to give up. You want me to give up. You want me to back down. You want me to da 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 Olivia said, look, it's over, Millie. I'm sorry, but you need to go and see your uh, candidacy as a uh, presidential candidate because Cyrus deserves to win I'm going to put my everything behind him essentially is what Olivia is telling her you need to do the same and she's over it she's over it Abby comes in to tell well to show Cyrus that he's being exonerated that David Rosen saying shout out to Cyrus we apologize for everything we put you do we know that we did too much so everyone's watching. Fitz is watching. Olivia, Theresa Popa, and Associates are watching. Uh, for a moment. For a moment. Was Quinn, like, trying to... Oh. Quinn and Hawk. That is a mess. And Charlie needs to watch out, because Quinn is not... <laughs> Charlie, you lost Quinn. The moment Hawk came out of that coma, you lost Quinn. And I feel like he still partially doesn't see it, which astonishes me. Love does that? I guess so. Cyrus, as I said, Cyrus is so happy that he's being exonerated and that Red was the one to help him out. Now we have to go with plan B, phase, phase B. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? How are we going to figure it out? Go after, uh, you know, the Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs people. And it's just like, how is everyone doing? How is Cyrus doing? Fitz wants to know. And Olivia's saying, you know, everything's being handled right now. Her usual tagline. And, how, uh, sorry. And Fitz says, mm -mm. bring it here. You're not doing well. You're not doing well. I see it all in your face, baby. So he goes, he embraces her, gives her a hug. And Red brings home Cyrus. Cyrus just wants to be alone. And Red's just like, look, Cyrus, I'm glad you're back. I'm really happy for you. 
and you're about to be the President of the United States, so get ready for that. And he's kind of shocked. He's kind of shell-shocked. He's remembered everything that's happened to him. And right now, he's not happy. He's over it. I feel like, okay, at this point, he's going to be a little moody. Next thing we see is... Lord Jesus, Caitlyn Jenner, no. Next thing we see is, what's the plan? What's the main plan of action? Like I said, right now, Millie is thinking, all right, I'm going to have to give up. All of a sudden, Liz North, out of nowhere, comes and tells her, look, I actually voted for you, and you're not acting like the woman that I vote for. Regardless of how I feel about you, because I don't actually like you, but I feel like you would be a great president. I feel like you're a great example of leadership and power and empowerment. You are a strong woman, and that's why I want to put my energy behind. That's why I'm really here. That's why I'm telling you you can't give up. I said, Liz, die. <laughs> I said, Liz, die. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I physically can't do it. I can't. I can't. We're at uh, Olivia's house, and, well, apartment. Huck is there. He's in the, her bed with her robe on. Charlie said, look, it's really comfortable. I know I wore it a couple of times, so we gave it to Huck. <laughs> That's not what he said, but he might as well have said that. Next thing we know, guess who comes? Me uh, what? Oh, uh, Millie comes and she wants to talk to Olivia and essentially tell Olivia that I know I'm supposed to do the right thing. I know I'm supposed to see my presidency to Cyrus, but I don't want to do that. I have an opportunity. It's my right after all this time. And Olivia tells her, no, it's not your right. Cyrus would be the president fair and square in this situation. Cyrus went to jail for all of us. Cyrus almost went down because of all of us. And it's not fair. <laughs> Millie said, fair? I'm talking to the mistress of my ex. Tell me that this isn't, what I'm doing isn't fair? I'm sure that's what she was thinking. Look, Olivia, I actually like you now, and I sort of respect, and I actually respect you now, so I'm going to do you a favor. I don't care what you have to say. I'm still going to go ahead and do whatever I want anyway, because I want this. And if that means we have to be on opposite sides, that means we have to be on opposite sides. But I want this. So now Olivia is saying, all right, guys, guess who we're representing? Olivia's back to fixing things. Now she's going to try and fix Cyrus's life. She's going to try and fix Cyrus's life and get him back on the track, get him to win, which means now she's going to be working with Abby again so that they can go and spin everything. So we see different debates, different interviews going on. We see a debate. Uh, we see Liz do a press conference essentially saying, how can we go and take a presidential candidate that was hauled off to jail and initially said, oh, he did, he was the one who killed the president-elect. And you're telling us that, tell me that you want him? Mm, I think not. So now they have to go and battle. Liz versus Abby. And, of course, Abby's, it's Abby, so she tries, she really tries to hold her own and protect Cyrus, but it doesn't work. So, Olivia decides she needs to do one better. She goes over to Cyrus's place, and she runs gives him, she's like, here's here's some suits. He said, what? Yeah, they're not going to fit. Oh, okay. And Olivia is trying to give Cyrus his pep talk of, Cyrus, you the man, I'm sorry, I am sorry. It said, sorry. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's the last one, last things you said to me before. You also told me that you'd never see me again, never speak to me again. When you were so convinced that I was a bad guy, so convinced that I was the terrorist, so convinced that I need to take one for the team and go down with the ship. Now you want to come in here and go and fix things? But they said, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to help you win. I want to help you succeed. I want to, you know, emotionally exonerate myself. That's not what she said, but this is what I'm thinking. The whole time while Olivia's talking, she keeps opening the door, keeps trying to uh, keep the door open, budge the door. She has her hand on the handle, and Cyrus says, get away, go! And she's like, no, but in another thing, Cyrus says, excuse me, I'm going to do the same thing that you did to me, and went, closed the door right in her face. I said, you know what, Olivia, you deserve that. You deserve that because you turned your back on that man, and you want things so bad, it has to be Olivia's way, no way, so bad, that you kind of forgot that you did something so trash to a friend of yours. If you could do that to a friend, we've seen what you do to your enemies, so I don't even have to finish that. But then we have Webster uh, in the bed with Fitz, and this entire season was weird. They're in the bed, 
And the lighting, first of all, I said, why is there more, <laughs> there's more light on her side than his side? I noticed that. It could have been, you know, because of the clothes they're wearing, the light reflection. She's wearing black, so light was absorbed. She's darker, so light would be the sword. I don't know. What I do know is, I said, this is, this, I feel no chemistry. This feels more like a work relationship. Like, ah, uh, we work together. Ah, uh, we smash a couple of times. Ah. Uh. But no. That's all that is. And she's trying to go after Olivia. She's saying, you know, something doesn't add up with that woman. That, did you go and talk with her? Did you recently speak to her? It's like, no, I haven't had any involvement with Olivia. Are you sure? Because this is something about her. You know, it's weird how she was just kind of entangled in everything. And here, one day, go on the next. Something doesn't seem right. Olivia decides she wants to go and help Cyrus, whether he wants to help or not. So she enlists Frankie Vargas' wife to go and speak on um, Cyrus's behalf. And, of course, she wants to do this because it's like, look, this man really did love Frankie, so, of course, I'm going to do what I can to help him. But she gets an alarming call from her father. I thought, oh, my gosh, the trap, he's already dead. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, my God, it's a trap. He's already dead. But, no. He's fine. He brings Olivia into, of course, he's talking about, you know, working on this, um, on this dinosaur, this T-Rex, with, oh, was it, Sandra, and that didn't work out too well. But, he was like, look, I need to speak with you over here, Olivia. Come here, step in this circle, Olivia. And when she did, then he said, look, they're watching me. They have this whole place wired, so they see everything. But there's a blind spot. This circle, this perimeter right here, this fortress, our small fortress of solitude, this is where we get to go and talk. Olivia needs to cut it. You need to stop trying to get Cyrus to become the president. Why? Because Cyrus is the type of man that he's, he's great. Who cares? He's going to get us killed if he becomes president. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill you. The only reason why I'm alive is because they feel like I can kind of control my daughter. That's the only reason why they're keeping me alive. For you, because they want you. It's all about you. So I need you to go and drop this. Olivia said, that's cute and all. That's really cute, Dad. Because, you know, she did her usual, oh, kill you. Oh, they want to kill me. Oh. But at the end of the day, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to find out the truth. And you know what, Dad? Boy voyage. I will see you next time. And Papa Pope walks out of the circle like, oh my god. This woman is, my daughter is going to get me killed. She's going to get herself killed. So Frankie Vargas' wife goes and gives a rebel rousing speech of how Fra Frankie was a great man. But Cyrus was the man that was chosen by Frankie. And he has the same morals, the same viewpoints. He wants to see Frankie's vision come alive. And I believe him. I support him. I feel like Frankie today, if the shoe was on the other foot, would do the same. So, vote Frankie. Essentially, Millie's looking at this like, oh my god. And the Olivia Pope train begins. I was kind of happy to see Olivia Pope fixing stuff. But I felt like, mm, this feels kind of off since you're the one who partially got this whole thing started so fixing your own mess is it's great as far as a life lesson but anyway now we have analysts going and they're talking to who they call in olivia because they're like olivia look Oli come here bro olivia look they're talking to michael who is cyrus's ex and because uh, cyrus wants to see his daughter but michael won't allow it michael says you know what because they asked him do you think Cyrus killed Frankie Vargas. No, I do not think Cyrus killed Frankie Vargas. But I do know that Cyrus is a bad man. I do know that Mr. Bean, he is a liar. He is a cheater. He's someone that can't be trusted. And so even though Cyrus uh, is not a killer, or at least didn't kill Frankie's, Frankie, he did kill or murder our relationship. Or he did... Uh, hurt me. I said, okay, who did this? So now, of course, Olivia's going, she calls up Millie. I was like, what'd you do? Why'd you do this? I said, first of all, Olivia, you said that I'm a goody two-shoes, right? Why would I go and do something like this? That doesn't even sound like it makes any sense. What are you talking about? And Olivia originally didn't believe her, 
but she was like, oh, so it was Liz. No, and Liz didn't do this either, because Liz called me and said, what did you do? I, 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 dang, does no one believe that I'm capable of doing something positive? So now Olivia goes, runs to Fitz, and says, we need to spin this. We need to spin this because Cyrus, she doesn't want to come out. We need him. We need him to come and speak to the people, and I need you to do it. That's essentially what their conversation was. Because, of course, uh, remember, Fitz kicked out Cyrus. So that's what started this whole thing. And they never really came to a resolution. So that's part of um, the issue. So then Fitz has to go and to visit Cyrus. That visit was interesting and it was neat, and I'm so glad that Fitz did it, because at the end of the day, Cyrus really loved Fitz, and, you know, Fitz is just, since they were actual friends, here's what happened. Since they were actual friends, Cyrus was able to do something that he couldn't do before. He talked about what happened in jail. He talked about getting beat up and that the guards set it up. He talked about uh, the moment when he was arrested. He just talked about everything. And it was good that Cyrus could finally get that off his chest. And Fitz, once he heard him out, gave him some alcohol, he told him, Look, you are the man that deserves to be the President of the United States. When I went into that hospital to tell you that you're the new President, I meant it. And I'm doing it again. After everything that you've done for us, for me, I am here for you. Finally, I am here for you. It is your time. So now we see Abby and Olivia. They're watching the TV, watching this press conference for Cyrus. And Cyrus starts it off like, I shouldn't be president. I don't understand why I'm possibly going to be the president of the United States. It doesn't make any sense. You know, like a lot of people in Washington, I do bad things. I've done multiple bad things. Again, this speech, that was good because that did address kind of what Michael was saying, and he was being very honest, being transparent, if you will. But then, he slowly goes and starts to talk about Frankie, and how great Frankie was, and his ideals, and his morals, and he was such a good person, and people saw that, and people wanted to go and work with him, and then they're like, okay, and then he put that spin. That's that when you're in a conversation, when you're in a speech, when you change directions, and you go full steam ahead. Uh, and Cyrus decided, it's like, you know what, and Frankie, he's gone, but his ideals still live within me. That's why I was his VP nomination, and if you give me the opportunity, I will go, and I know I can't be him. I know I can't just see things the way that he sees things, but I know what he wanted to do, and that's what I'll do if I become the president of the United States, if you vote for me. Because this man, this man, our current president, was the one who came to me and talked me, talked to me and reminded me that it's my responsibility at, to at least try to see Frankie's vision come alive and come through. And so Olivia's was like, "Oh my God, Cyrus, you doing it? You doing it? Oh my God, I knew I chose the right team." We know Olivia's also trying to figure out, okay, which team am I gonna go on to make sure that I get into that White House? That's Olivia's thing. It's always partially about power. Here comes Millie. She comes in and Liz is like, meet your benefactors. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, aka the people that have been doing the puppet strings and set up all of the uh, Sarah and Theramule, whatever his name is. And they're like, hey! And so they're her benefactors. They're the ones that have been pulling the strings in the background. They say the election is yours. We went and we, you know, we convinced, cough, cough, convinced the voters uh, to go and vote your way. So it's set. Signed, sealed, and delivered. You say, excuse me? Yeah, that's how it's going to work. No, no, no. I know these people. I know you. You're trash. Why would I work with people that went and killed Frankie? Why would I work? I'm doing this honest. I'm doing this my way. And it's like, okay, you guys can leave. No one tells me what to do. And this is, excuse me, no one tells you what to do? Yeah, no one tells me what to do. This is, why don't we go, sit down, take a moment, relax. Mind you, at this time, Sarah went from behind the desk to she was behind Liz, and she had this baseball club. And I said, uh, not baseball, this golf club. I, I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. And the more Millie said, you know what? 
security, well, Millie was essentially like, okay, security, get them out. Next thing we know, we see Blonde Ponytail go, sweet, Sarah go, she lifts up, boom, hits, and hits, and hits, and hits, and kills, and kills, and kills, Liz. I said, oh my god. Of course, Millie's mortified because now the guy's telling her, here's how this works. Sarah becomes your new um, chief of staff. Uh, and she's the one that's going to tell you everything that you um, need to know, need to do. Anything that we want accomplished, she'll inform you. You got it? Because here's how this works. Your kids, they're oh so cute. Anyone else that's important to you in your life, they're oh so cute. But they're all replaceable. All of them are replaceable. You got it? At this point, blood spatter is all over Millie. So she's just so shook that she's she's like, all right. All right, of course. And I said, dang, I don't like Ponytail. But at the end of the day, Ponytail told off Abby and then killed Liz? I'm so conflicted. Ponytail actually killed off Ab I mean, uh, told off Abby and just killed Liz in one season. I hate Ponytail and I want her to die in a slow and painful death, but I don't know. I don't she just, she irks me so much, so, no, 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 she's still trash, she's still trash. At this point, Fitz is over it, he's over it, he tells Webster, here's how this works, because now Webster wants to go and put Olivia in jail. She wants to put Olivia in jail because she found the accounts, you know, the fraudulent accounts with Olivia's name on it, to Thomas, saying that, okay, now this could be seen as Olivia was the one who paid Thomas to go and shoot and kill Frankie Vargas, even though we know, even though we know that wasn't even the case. This is too much. This is too much. And because Fitz knows the truth, and it's Olivia, he's trying to steer uh, Webster away from that conclusion, but it's not working. Webster's still pushing for it. He tells it, look, here's how this works. I'm going to... Uh, do you, you still like your job, right? Like, what are you doing? He said, D don't even try and go that route. Don't even try and go that route. Next thing we know, Olivia gets called. She walks in to Millie's office. Melly still has the blood spatter all over her. She's just like, oh my god. Uh, uh, Olivia, because they told her. They told her, here's what you need to do. Shh. Don't tell anyone what happened. Uh, this is all going to be a secret. Everyone you love will be killed. If you go and spill your guts, we are going to go. You're going to go and clean this up. We have so much on you. Goodbye. <laughs> Millie, and I'm so glad that they, I'm so glad that she didn't listen to them. And she, she's one of the smartest people on the show. I have to give it to her. I'm so glad finally someone did the smart thing. This is when you call Olivia. She called Olivia. Olivia came like, oh my god, what happened? She told her, you know, what really happened with them going and trying to set her up and they're going to guarantee her to be the President of the United States and she doesn't know what to do. Olivia tells her, don't worry about it. We're going to go and fix this. We're going to make sure that we call the people, that we get it stopped. She says, no, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill everyone to get what they want. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, Olivia? What are you thinking? What are you doing? And then Olivia said, I have to go because I have to figure this out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you for calling me. I said, thank you. Yes, thank you for calling me because that was the smartest thing anyone's done on the show for seasons. But now we have Jake. Jake will come in and he'll handle it. Jake will come and clean up. He'll get you together. And I said, Jake, we're leaving this in Jake's hands? And Olivia said, and Millie said, wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah? <laughs> so then Jake's is like, no, don't look at her. Look at me. Look, look, look at me. I'm going to go and clean you up. I'm your vice president. My job is to clean up the messes. My job is to make sure that you are good. What we're going to do is, do you have a change of clothes? Okay, we're, slowly, you're going to take all of this off. I'm going to clean you up. Then we're going to put you in your suit. I will get rid of the body. And then we'll pretend like this never happened. And we'll come up with a plan. 
Okay? Okay. I, I said, wait a minute. The one time I'm happy Jake is here? But trust me, the one time I'm happy Jake is here? Because normally Jake can get a, um, like a baseball bat, a golf club, you, a car, thrown, ran over, hit, hit him. That's where I'm normally going. So now Olivia, she goes and she tells Fitz what just happened with regards to um, Millie and that the election's being stolen and we need to do something. And uh, you know what? When she comes in and tries to tell him all of that, it's like he hears it. But then he's just like, oh my God, your father. Because before, they had an argument because she, well, you know, was saying all this stuff initially and like what her father told her. And she feels like, it Fitz feels like, the man who got my son killed, you, he's been a problem. I want to take him out forever. You just say the word and it happened. She said, don't do anything. Now he's saying, we need to put him in jail because a uh, once Olivia finds out that Webster wants to put her in jail, she said, this is great. Millie will automatically lose when she find, once the public finds out her campaign manager was the one who went and did all this shady stuff. That, and Olivia was willing to go to jail. And I said, you know what? You know what? This is actually boss. This is, this is stupid, but it's actually boss. Olivia, at this point, wants to take responsibility and be accountable because... All this time we're like, dang, we love Olivia, but she does some crazy stuff and gets away with it, and it's not right. At the end of the day, it's not right. So the fact that she's like, you know what, it's my time to do my time, Cyrus did his time, you got shot, everyone has had to do their time. Let me do my part. I, I said, look, Olivia, I gain newfound respect for you, but your man Fitz is not going to let that happen. He said, look, I'd rather put your father in jail than you. The actual criminal. I said, oh, Olivia's a criminal too, but that was cute. Yeah, the actual criminal, but not you. Olivia then runs to Cyrus and tells Cyrus, congratulations on being the new president of the United States of America. I'm going to go to jail. Cyrus is even telling her, what's wrong with you? I was just there. It's terrible. I, I don't know how it's going to be, but I need to do my part. What happened to you? I can't just go. And I said, oh, she's doing this off of emotion partially. And that's the part I didn't like. So then Webster comes in her office, in Fitz's office, and so it's like, you know what? We're officially going to arrest her now. We're officially going to do it. He said, no, you're not. You're actually going to go pack up your things. I found you a nice little desk job, you know, Missouri, wherever it was, in Montana, Kentucky. Not here. Not here. She said, oh, well, you know, Olivia's a criminal one way or the other. She's going to get hers. I said, Mm, that's cute that you think so, but it's not going to go the way that you do. Yeah, and obviously this is over. The fact that you were so blinded to think that your investigation was because it was the right thing to do. You were doing this because it's Olivia, your so-called friend. I knew Webster was trash. I, I was so disappointed. I'm so glad she's gone. 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 Throw him out in the dumpster. Gone. Next. Now we have Pop, we're at, uh, Papa Pope's you know, place and his shop. And the FBI's there. They're arresting him. Fitz wants to put him in his custody. I said, uh-oh. Wait, what? In his custody? Even I caught that. I was like, wait, what? Olivia's over. She's like, what's going on? You just did my father. You didn't take my father. They're, look, they said, look, we can. Because Olivia's saying, once the president finds out, the president was the one who ordered this. <gasps> and then her dad looking like, oh my god. Oh my god. Now it's time for the Electoral College to do their thing. And Millie was drinking her, you know, her evil concoction of alcohol, moonshine slash whatever, while everyone was saying Millie. And they were saying it reluctantly, like, oh, like we really didn't want to vote for her, but if we have to, to make sure that we stay alive and don't die and our families don't die in a horrible death, Millie. Jake, I mean, David looks terrified next to his girlfriend. It's like, <laughs> hey, honey. I said, you better buck up. Don't mess this up, David. Don't mess this up. Abby's like, I'm so sorry, Cyrus, because Cyrus is losing. He's not going to be the president. And I said, wow, what a role reversal, even though switching of the genders, but it still kind of feels like what kind of happened to us on November 8, 2016, to a certain degree. To a certain degree. Uh, the country changed hands, changed over to 
this administration of fools and bigotry and to distract us from the stuff that they're trying to... Sh oh, over it. Over it! Over it! It's only been a couple of months. Over it! Already. Over it. <laughs> November 8th. I mean, November 9th. But, Abby's like, I'm sorry. Sorry, Sith, for what? <laughs> for all of this. You don't deserve this. All of this. And Olivia comes in, she busts in like, Excuse me? How dare you? You go and you arrest my father? I told you that I'd never forgive you. I told you that you would uh, lose me. And because this was like, I was going to lose you if you go to jail. Well, you're going to lose me if you put my father in jail. She's like, How dare you? I can't believe you're going to do this to me. And you know what? I'm going to do what I can to get him out of here and know we're done. He said, Olivia, I, I arrested your father and put him in my protective custody. Turns on the camera into the oval. And we see Papa Pope look at the camera like, Hey girl! <laughs> Olivia looked shook, sat down, like, oh my god. Fitz loves his woman so bad. I mean, so much that he was willing to save her father, because that's what really happened. Papa Pope has been saved by the man who he took his son away from. Because his daughter um, is the apple of this man's eye. Papa Pope got saved because they would have killed him. They would have killed him. Oh my god. Oh my god. They would have killed him because... He's no longer useful. He's no longer necessary. They're trying to do it the regular route by going through Olivia. And so then when Olivia's on that couch, it just has a look of, <laughs> I've just been so overworked, so overstressed. <laughs> and you. <laughs> she looks at Fitz. He looks at her. They get closer. And then they kiss. The slow kiss. And embrace the slow love and kiss and embrace. Millie's just over it, and we, we see that there's blood, you know, underneath her neck. And she's like, okay, yeah, to keep it real. Always have to keep a little bit left to keep it real. And so then <laughs> Olivia and Fitz go into the bedroom. I said, though she's better been clean with Webster gone. But I said, Millie's the new present. And Olivia and Fitz, oh, Litz, they're back? Cyrus is out of jail? Everyone's not going to work together to... Papa Pope is safe? Liz is dead? This episode... Shonda, thank you. I thank you. She knew it was going to be good. She knew it. That's why she put on one of the best scandal episodes right before as a lead-in, because she knew it. Because she wanted to do the contrast of when the whole presidency thing initially was occurring to now. And when their relationship was really forming and getting strong. And now when they're coming back together. Oh, thank you, Shonda. Thank you. Thank you, Shonda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, oh, please like, comment, subscribe.